So we're running the latest version of Mac OS, and we're gonna be running the latest version of Windows, Windows 11. We can actually install it as what's called a virtual machine, a VM. Essentially, you're gonna install the full operating system of Windows directly on your Mac, and then you open it up essentially like an application directly on your Mac, side by side. You're gonna need three things to make this thing work. Firstly, a Mac, right? Pretty self-explanatory. You can do this on a Mac laptop, on a MacBook Pro, on a MacBook. You could do this on an iMac, a Mac Pro, a Mac Mini. The more grunt, the more processing power, the more RAM you've got, the better Windows will run. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna be giving Windows a little bit of the space. Some of those resources that were dedicated for the Mac are now going to be shared with Windows. So the more powerful your Mac is, the better experience you'll have for Windows, but also for the Mac. And the great thing about VMware Fusion is you can actually allocate how much resources you want to actually give the Windows side, and you can actually add more resources, remove resources. The second thing, is a copy of VMware Fusion. Go and get it. I've got the link down below in my description to VMware Fusion, go and get it. And then number three is you need, of course, a copy of Windows. So three things, a good enough Mac, VMware Fusion, and an ISO. Let's go right now. now. You've got yourself three different options over here. The first one is just the standard VMware Fusion player if it's gonna be completely for personal use. If you're not doing this in a commercial environment, you're not doing it in a business, you can go and create yourself a VMware account and then download the, v the Fusion player there for free. Then you've got VMware Fusion player 13, the fully fledged version, $149. And then you've also got VMware Fusion 13 Pro. Let's go through the differences very, very quickly. And as you can see that the player gives you all of the ticks right there. It does not give you these other great features while the Pro gives you all of this. And then Pro Plus support gives you some technical support as well. So I'm gonna recommend I generally recommend always getting the better version available, which is going to be the pro version. You're gonna get the most features out of it, especially if you're wanting to build a whole bunch of other virtual machines in future, then that's probably a good one to go with. So I'd recommend go and download the pro version or the play version if you don't want all the features, but if it's completely for free for your own personal use, for your own testing, then you can go and download the free version as well. And then you can also register that later on. If you're going for the pro, you just go and add it to your cart and then you just go and download that copy. Once you've got Fusion installed, you've put in your admin stuff and it's ready to go. We then open up Fusion. There it is down there in my little dock there and it opens up. All right, now in your Google machine, you're gonna to need to note something right over here that if you're running a Mac OS computer that is running an Intel processor, not an M1 or an M2 processor, you can just go ahead and download Windows 11 right from the standard website by going download right in here. And then you can go and navigate to the download Windows 11 space and then download it. The problem is that if you're running an M1 or an M2, this version, this ISO will not actually work because it's not compatible with the M1, M2 or the ARM processor types, which is what's inside these newer Macs. If it's an Intel Mac, you can go and download this. It'll be the x86, x64 version, and that'll work fine on Intel. But if you are running an M1 or an M2, you're gonna to need to go find this ARM64 version. And at this time, it is just the insider preview. So you need to go and actually register to become an insider within Microsoft to be able to download it. So to become an insider, you need to go to insider.windows.com. You can also go into Google, type in Windows Insider or Windows Register Insider. You'll be navigated to this window and then you can actually go and register for the insider program. You need to go and sign in to your Windows Microsoft account. If you don't have one, you'll have to go and create one first to then be able to go and set all of this stuff up. So go and do that, set up with your Insider program, and then we can go and download the ISO from there. Being a registered member, we can go and select our version. You can get the dev version or the beta version. We're gonna go and select the latest one, which is the latest build over there. But just remember, because this is in a little bit of an Insider developer beta program, it's not the fully fledged final copy of Windows 11. So it is in trial and evaluation, maybe a little bit buggy here or there. Don't use this generally in a production environment, but it's great for you to still be able to run Windows fully fledged on your Mac. Confirm. Download now commences, it's gonna be pretty big, 9.8 gig. Gonna need a few of these coffees to get me through while we wait. 
So you notice that the file is a VHDX, which is a Hyper-V file. So you can't really natively add that into VMware. So you need to go and run a little bit of code inside your terminal. I'm gonna open up our terminal window. If you don't know where this is, go and search for it in your finder window. You're gonna go under applications, under utilities, and in there, there is the terminal. We're gonna paste this command right into here. All right, there is the command. I'm gonna add that down below as well in the description if you need to know it. And we're gonna press install. And that's gonna install some homebrew software onto your computer to be able to let you convert that into a readable form so that we can add it into our VMware Fusion. Throw in your admin password. If you're happy with all that's going on, press okay. That should have been successfully installed as you can see right there. If yours hasn't, go and try that command again. But then it's great because it actually shows you the next steps right here. But the next steps are to now paste these commands that you can see. Let's go ahead and copy those commands and then just paste them back into our terminal and run them one by one. And that second one. And then the final one right there. And then run the command brew afterwards. And that's looking good. That means that's all ready to go. You then wanna type in this command to install the package and enter. Okay, here's the command we want to run now. QEMU-IMG, we do a convert, a dash O, not a zero, VMDK. So we're gonna convert it to a VMDK. We now drag in the file itself, the VHDX, which is the Hyper-V file. And then where do we actually want to save that to? We're gonna do a tilde sign, which is the number next to, well, next to number one, forward slash, where are we gonna put it? We'll just throw it straight onto the desktop. You, of course, put your relevant path, make sure that the folder actually exists. And then Windows 11.vmdk. VMDK is a file format of a disk in a VMware environment. So we're converting the Hyper-V into a VMware. That's essentially what we're doing with this process. And then we press enter. Shouldn't take too long to do, but then once it's done, we should have that VMDK file now on our desktop. And here we have our new VMDK file. Fantastic. We can now close out of our terminal and in our installation media, we're gonna go and actually select right in here, create a custom virtual machine. Okay, we're gonna click on continue. We're gonna go Windows, Windows 11 64-bit ARM. I'm gonna say continue. Leave the boot as default. We throw ourselves a password to, for encryption. So put in a nice complex password that you will remember. You forget this, you're gonna be in trouble. We then select, this is the important part, use an existing virtual disk. You're not gonna go and create a new one. You're gonna go and use an existing one. The existing disk, of course, being this VMDK file right here. So we're gonna go and select choose virtual disk. We're gonna go and select that virtual disk that we've just created. Here it is, Windows 11. Make a separate copy, sounds good choose okay existing disk 64 gig capacity great 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 continue some summaries four gig etc you can go and change this right now if you want to so you can actually select customize setting where do i want to save my windows 11 well this is now going to be saved this is the virtual image the actual virtual file itself the vm it's going to be stored under your home drive and then under virtual machines the folder right in there and that's where it's going to save it copying disk let this do its thing. It may take a little bit of time. And now you can actually go and customize some of the specs for that virtual machine. You can make them higher, you can make them lower, you can increase, decrease all of those specs. You can do this later on, of course. Once the VM is finished, you can actually shut it down and then increase the stuff later on. But if all things are good here, we can now click on the play button. Here we go, great, looks excellent. We can now start our installation of Windows. I'm sure we don't need to go through all of this with you, but just follow all the prompts, configure it how you need. Now, if you're gonna get something like this, it means that the actual, there's a driver problem going on. So what you're gonna do is on your Mac, making sure that you're in this window, you're gonna do function shift and then F10 on your Mac to open up a command prompt like this. You're essentially gonna tell Windows to bypass the network piece, the network check that it's doing right here. So the command we'll put in is OOB, backslash bypass NRO, such as that, and press enter. Reload, let's go through this again. We're gonna accept some of these basic terms. You'll now notice that under the internet, it allows you to say, I do not have internet. So we're gonna click on that one. You're gonna agree to those terms and then create your profile.
So Windows is now installed, but just wait though, you need to install VMware tools to get this thing working very, very well. VMware tools is one of those tools that works by getting the Windows operating system working very, very well with the host, which is v, uh, VMware Fusion. And you actually need to install that and you need to do that manually. And the way that you're gonna do that is you can open up the start menu right over here. And we're gonna type in PowerShell and you're gonna right click and actually open up PowerShell as the administrator. You know, full access. And there's one other thing you need to install right into here. I'm gonna follow this command again down below. I've actually put that in there. It's all case sensitive. So set das execution policy and then remote signed and say yes to that. Done. Now, what we're gonna do is under here. So what you need to do is up in here, virtual machine, you're gonna select reinstall VMware tools and install. You're gonna now find it inside of your Windows Explorer. You've got VMware tools listed right over here. Here's our installation. We're going to right click and we're going to run with PowerShell, open that up. This is now going to fix essentially a lot of the driver issues that you may actually see if you don't do this. Sound, video, all of that sort of stuff will be fixed by installing VMware tools. Make a note, right? The fact that you have to do all of these steps says to me and says to you that it's not natively supported. Microsoft doesn't really natively support the M1, the M2 processors, but you can get it to work and it actually works quite well don't do this in a production environment. Do this for your own testing. If you want to run your own copy of Windows, it'll work brilliantly. And one other little thing, if you want to know a lot more about VMware Fusion, I've got a full length training course available. Check it out down below in my description. Do the subscribe, do the like thing. Really appreciate it. it helps me to grow my channel and I really appreciate you sticking by. There's a whole range of other videos available on my channel. So why don't you stay here for the next video that is coming up?